Hi, in this video we are talking about uh, using DLL in your project. Okay, so to start with, we will uh, create a new project as you can see here. Okay, and we are going to use uh, Visual Basic and we will use Windows. Uh, we want a desktop application. Uh, yeah, we will use the .NET framework. Uh, there are two, in fact, if you can see here, there's .NET and .NET framework. I think this is the old one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it has been a while, but this should be .NET framework, which means 3, 4, 4.5, and this one is .NET Core. Uh, the principle should be similar, uh, so no problem there. But I will use this one. I'll give it a next. Here the project name, um, I'll call this GUI. And uh, the solution name will be testing uh, DLLs. Okay. And uh, yeah, I will just give it a create command. And uh, things should be straightforward for .NET Core, not much of a difference. Uh, these should be like dependencies instead of reference and so on. So, uh, we'll do something very simple here. We will add a button, as you can see here. And I will just say MSG box uh, high. That's it. And if I try to run this, okay, you get high and not much is done there however um, here i am assuming that this code is very complex uh, there is a lot of processing happening and so on so you don't want uh, your code to be placed in this project because you you might uh, give another programmer the job of modifying it so you want one programmer to handle the ui the other to handle um, the logic or the algorithms that are doing the processing and so on. Maybe you have three, three user, different user interfaces that work with the same, uh, you know, database or logic somehow. So instead you want one central location that everyone could access for, uh, uh, everyone could access. And when that central location is being updated, everyone gets you know the, the new version of the code okay so here uh, uh, I will add uh, the DLL so add a new project so here I will use instead of uh, Windows desktop I will use where's the library there you go not the standard it's the framework here there you go Okay, next, and instead of this one, I'll call this my DLL. Okay, and give it a create. So, wait a few seconds, and there you go. This is my DLL. Okay, uh, main functions. I'll call this class main functions. So, public shared sub say hello and it will be msg box hello and there you go very straightforward now we want to tell our gui project to use the code in this one here okay so let's save this uh, yeah i will just rename this to be the same name of the class it will be what main functions there you go okay so in order to make this one sees my dll and then sees main functions i have to go to references okay in the gui project i say add reference and it will show me it will show the project i will say add my dll so i give it an okay so uh, now that is expanded you can see that gui here is now accessing my DLL and there, there are more code as well uh, sorry more libraries as well uh, your user interface here your user 
is using the following DLLs or libraries like system, system core, system beta, and so on and so forth. Anyway, so let's we'll go to the form. And now I will just say uh, my DLL dot main functions say hello. So have a look at this. I am using the DLL name followed the, uh, by the name of the class followed by the name of the method. If you have a module, you can ignore the name of the class by, uh, or the module itself, but it, it's as simple as that. Okay, so I am gonna run this. Give it a second, please. Okay, and there you go. I'll just hit this one and hello. Now, you, if you want, you could just go to main functions. Inside this, I will say hello from the DLL project. And I will run this. I will give it an OK. And hello from the DLL project. Okay, so you might be wondering, okay, well, you said it's a DLL. How can I make sure it is a DLL? Well, that's very straightforward. Go to your GUI project and open folder on File Explorer and go to the bin directory, go to the debug directory. You'll find there is this GUI.exe and there is this my DLL uh, file. So if I run this, Look here, no problem. But I'll do something different here. I'll just delete the DLL and we'll see what happens when I try to run this. I click and I get a crash. And why? Because the project could not load the file or assembly, meaning it could not load the DLL, okay, uh, which is called my DLL and so on. And if you go to the details, it will give you more information where the error happened and so on. And in order to solve this, you could either recompile the project or restore the other file. So now it works. Okay. So this is all fun and nice, no problem. But well, uh, it's easy here, as you can see. We created a DLL, we created the GUI. Maybe you create other four projects that are referencing this DLL, okay? And this way, if you change he things here, you also get things updated up there. However, this is all not only the, uh, the, the, this is not the way, only way to use a DLL. Sometimes you don't want to give your source code to another programmer, but rather you want to give them a compiled DLL. Okay, so let us take this one, my DLL, I will just copy it and I will close the solution, okay, and I will create a new project, okay, so here Windows Desktop, where is the .NET framework, uh, wait a minute, there you go, from the application .NET, next. Now this is going to be second test to DLL and I will just create it. There you go. So here, uh, let me go to the desktop folder, my DLL, okay. So uh, you could call it whatever you, uh, what you like, no problem. I'll just paste it here, just to see. This is the my DLL the previous file. I'll go back here, and now um, I will try to add a reference. Okay, and it, you can't see any project here. My DLL is on a separate file, so I'll say browse. I will go to the desktop uh, where is my DLL here and go here add so this DLL file has been added to my project I give it an OK and now I will just 
go here and I will say my DLL. You can see that it just recognized my code. Main functions dot say hello. Okay, and there is no other project. I only added a reference. So now when I run this code and I hit this button, the code execute. I didn't uh, add the previous uh, source code to this project. I just got the DLL. Okay, uh, it is as simple as that. Okay, so you could do the same thing with other uh, projects, uh, no problem, and it will work just as fine. And uh, you can see this with many other uh, commercial softwares. Some companies sell uh, .NET controls. Uh, okay, so you could just link them to your a project uh, and you'll see the new controls available and uh, you can see these these are DLLs from the .NET framework as you can see when you click on them here you can see it is system.dll for this one this is system core DLL this one system data DLL and so on so all these libraries are actually DLLs uh, that are being loaded whenever they are needed and uh, executed later on without you being able to see the source code. There is a way to see the source code but it doesn't always work and uh, it has to do with uh, you know protecting uh, the software and so on so it's not as simple as that but anyway uh, so this is a very simple introduction to using the LLs. Before we close, one important thing here, let me show you this. So here I will go to the folder, my DLL I created on the desktop, I will just delete it. Okay, and now I'll try to run this again. And I click here, it still works. I think it just copied it uh, locally. Let me rebuild. Did it copy it locally? Go here. Yeah, it seems that it, it copied the DLL locally. So let's go and open folder of File Explorer. So you could see this one here. Let me go to build debug and I will, let's say I, I delete this one. Okay. Uh, from the build directory. And now when I want to run this code again uh, you will see that there are built errors okay uh, let me try to restore this one and let me show you if I clean the solution and try to rebuild it okay so when I'm cleaning the solution it seems that it remembers okay this is uh, yeah I see that it remembers and put the DLL here now one very important thing to notice let's say you have a DLL that is calling another DLL uh, that might be calling a third DLL the problem with this is that you should not only add the first DLL here but maybe you need to add all the related DLLs together uh, because if one is missing it will cause a problem okay so you might want to put that in mind uh, that will be all uh, thank you and have a nice day bye bye